Good morning everyone. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome po to our online service this morning. Today is such a beautiful day that the Lord has made and it is such a joy to see that you are here with us, that you can join us as we continue to stay united and worship in giving and in prayer. I heard the line from a pastor where he said that even though we're practicing social distancing, fortunately, we won't have to practice spiritual distancing. And to always remember that the church is not just a place. It's people. People may ask us, where's Faith Fellowship? Faith Fellowship is everywhere. Because it's us. It's people. Before we start, I just want for us to ponder upon this verse in Psalm 27 verses 4 to 6. Where David said, one thing have I asked of the Lord, that I may seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in His temple. For He will hide me in His shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of His tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hallelujah. Why don't you join me in prayer right now? In this short prayer, bago po tayo magpatuloy sa ating pong time of praise and worship. Let us offer up our hearts to our King of Kings right now. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. And as your word declares, where two or more are gathered in your name, you will be in our midst. So today, Panginoon, even we're coming from our homes, together as one, we unite our hearts to seek you, to honor you, and to thank you for all the things that you have done in our lives. Thank you, God, for your provision. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your peace that passes all understanding. In spite of the things happening around us, Panginoon, tulungan niyo po kami ngayong umagang ito. To put our hope, our trust in you. And to fix our eyes on you, Father. Let nothing distract us, Lord, from your presence. And may you fill us with your, sp with your Spirit, O God. Because you are faithful and true. You are awesome, and you are mighty, and you are worthy. And we worship you today. Father, we love you, and we honor you na may malugod po kayo sa umagang ito, sa aming pagpuri at pagsamba, sa inyong dakilang pangalan, sa pangalan ni Jesus. Amen. Let us all together worship the Lord for all that He has done for us.
shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God, unstoppable. When all is said and done, No. 
Jesus said in John 16, verse 33, I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Let's sing this song as a song of declaration, a song of victory. God, I serve knows only how to change. 
believe that you are faithful. We believe that you are able. And Father, this morning, samahan niyo po kami, Panginoon. Prepare our hearts in hearing your word today. Help us as well, Lord, to obey you. Fill us with your holy presence and be magnified in our lives. We praise you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our online worship service. For this message, I would like to ask you to prepare something for you to write on. A paper, a journal perhaps, or you may want to use your phones or tablets, as I would be asking you to write down some things. There will be a point in this message where I would be asking you to reflect and to write down your answers or your reflections. And in that moment, I will be asking you to pause this video just to give you time to write down and do that particular reflection. So be aware of that. So you may want to pause this video right now so that you'll be able to get your pens, your papers, your journals, your notebooks ready. So pause this video right now. So we are under this uh, quarantine for more than a month now and this coronavirus obviously we are very much concerned and we are all worried about being exposed to this virus we are actually very vigilant about contracting and being infected by this virus and so we are doing everything possible so that we will not be infected and also that we may not be may not infect others as well in the process so we are doing social distancing community quarantines lockdowns um, our health workers are wearing personal protective equipments we wear masks whenever we would go out we will bring with us hand sanitizers alcohols making sure that we wash our hands with soap as often as possible I bring my quarantine pass with me whatever I would go out so we all are doing everything in our power not to be exposed to this virus this pandemic that is coronavirus has brought this generation into an unprecedented period of darkness ironically however this pandemic or the situation that we are in is doing something among and within us. It is also revealing something within us. There is something about this darkness that is aching to reveal or to expose. This darkness that we are in is surprisingly bringing forth many lessons that we would not otherwise see and learn unless we all go through it. This darkness, this pandemic, is sort of making a big reveal. It is exposing our hearts, and we are all being exposed for what we truly are because of this pandemic, because of this darkness. It is true that life's lessons or life's best lessons are learned in adversity, not in prosperity. It is in hardships that we learn the most. And it is often in periods of darkness when light unfolds. God knows this, and he himself speaks about this. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 3, God says, And I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, secret riches and you will know about you will know that i am doing this i the lord the god of israel i am the one who calls you by your name 
Isaiah 45, verse 3. <clears throat> now, there are three things in this powerful verse that is revealed or that are revealed to us today. One, there are treasures in darkness. Two, there is a purpose to darkness in our lives. And three, there is someone who is capable of revealing these treasures in this darkness that we are in. Let us all look at each of these three. First, there are treasures in darkness. Darkness. There are treasures, there are secret riches hidden behind by God or hidden by God in this darkness. There are so much jewel, so much gems, enormous amount of treasures that we will find in this darkness. Now, when, when Isaiah wrote this or prophesied about this, Israel would be in the darkness at this given period in time. Israel would actually be in captivity. Now, after the majestic period of Kings David and Solomon, Israel will eventually be divided. There will be the northern kingdom and there will be the southern kingdoms. Kingdom, And these two kingdoms will be uh, under the rulership of many kings th that will rule in these two kingdoms. But both kingdoms will suffer eventually the same fate, captivity. Both will end up being held in captivity in Babylon. And they will be thrown in this huge period of darkness. Why? Because they have forsaken God and trusted others appropriately which God called idols. But while in this period of captivity or this period of darkness, God, however, will continue to speak. I like what F.B. F. B. Meyer would say. He would say, the people of, uh, of, of uh, Israel, they would be assured that they would return from captivity, that God would rebuild Jerusalem and they would also eventually re-inhabit the cities of Judah. They probably expected, however, that their return would be marked by miracles as marvelous as those that they experience when they emerge from their captivity or bondage in Egypt. F.B. Meyer, however, notes, but God, however, never repeats himself, and his purposes would work out through a very um, uh, a king that they never expected would be used by the Lord, King Cyrus. And he would be the executor of God's divine and sovereign purpose. So, in effect, for the people of Israel, God will be using this period of captivity, this period of darkness in their history to reveal treasures, to reveal gems, and treasures in their lives. Now, sometimes the only way for us to learn, the only way for us to become wise, and the only way for us to become better people, or better as people, or human beings, or to become the best versions of ourselves, is when we go through periods of darkness. And so I'm pretty sure that in this moment right now of darkness, God wants to reveal a purpose of making us become better versions of ourselves. And that's the second point that I would like to emphasize today, that there is a purpose to darkness in our lives. God's intent is for his people to know these treasures hidden in the darkness. And God would make use of darkness for a purpose. For instance, why use Cyrus, the king of Persia? Isaiah 45 verse 13 reveals God speaking, I have raised up Cyrus to fulfill my righteous purpose, and I will direct all of his paths, and he shall be the vessel to restore my city and free my captive people. But God had a far more significant purpose than just restoring the people of God back to Jerusalem. 
In the Bible, however, the main reason why God allows periods of darkness is so that people may know Him more. This was, in fact, the very reason for God why He would be hiding and eventually why He would be giving these treasures in the darkness. In Isaiah 45, verse 3, God speaks, I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, and listen to this, and you will know that I am doing this. Darkness are at times God's designated avenues for us to know Him more, for us to acknowledge Him, or for us to come back to Him. The people of Israel went to captivity or were sent to captivity by God because ultimately they had forgotten God and they have moved away from God. They had made idols for themselves. They had trusted the work of their hands. They had trusted on others that appeared to be the solution to their problems. And they had placed their reliance on these but God. And so to captivity they were sent, where they will be stripped of all that they hold on to. They will be thrown into captivity to a period of darkness for them to know about God again. Now the third lesson from Isaiah 45 verse 3 is this. There is also someone, someone who alone can reveal these treasures in darkness. What I'm trying to say is this, only God can reveal these hidden treasures within the darkness. In Isaiah 45 verse 3, God says, And I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness, secret riches, and I will know that, and you will know that I am doing this, I the Lord, the God of Israel, the one who calls you by your name. God says, I will give you treasures hidden in the darkness. It is God who gives these hidden treasures. Sometimes God allows people to go through darkness and he permits darkness for a season or for a time. These treasures, however, cannot be fully appreciated for what they are unless God reveals it, unless God reveals it himself. And God calls people to know this hidden treasure. Isaiah 45 verse 3 was contextually specific in that it refers to Cyrus, the king of Persia. Yet today, I believe God continues to call people. And I do believe as we all are going through this pandemic, this worldwide period of darkness, I do believe with all my heart that God wants people all over the world to know that there is a treasure hidden behind this darkness that we are all in. There is a gem that is worth discovering. And God wants us to learn something from here. You know, God would not permit, God would not permit such a thing as this for no apparent reason. And so what I would like for us to do is to reflect on these treasures that God wants to reveal to us, on these gems that God wants to reveal to you. So this is where you would be needing now your paper, your journal, or anything that you could write your answers or your reflections onto. On a piece of paper, or your tablet, or your, or your journal, notebook, or your, or your phone, I want you to write your answers to these questions asking you to reflect upon. The first question is this. What are you realizing about God in this period of quarantine? What are you realizing 
were discovering about God in this period of quarantine. Why don't you pause this video right now, reflect on that question, and write down your answer. The second question is this. What are you discovering about yourself in this period of quarantine? What are you discovering about yourself in this period of quarantine? Why don't you write down your answers or your reflections to that question on your journal or your piece of paper right now? Pause this video as you write down your reflections. <clears throat> the third question is this. What is the Lord teaching you? What treasures is God revealing to you? What is the Lord teaching you? And what treasures is God revealing to you? Pause this video right now as you write down your reflections to the third question. I do believe that when I say or wrote that, yes, as I said a while ago, it was uh, contextually specific to the people of Israel and particularly Cyrus, the king of Persia. But in terms of meaning and in terms of, of, of purpose, I do believe that verse has a powerful message to all of us, that God has hidden treasures in this darkness that we are all in. And God has a reason for this darkness. And as we learn, this ultimate reason being so that people will know him more, so that we will know him more. And thirdly, God continues to call people for this, for us to know him even more and to know these treasures, to know these gems, to know these wisdom, even as we go through this period of darkness. And so that we will know him even more. I have one more treasure hidden in the darkness that we are in today. And what is this? God now calls his people through Jesus Christ. God the Father invites people to come to him through Christ. It is through Jesus Christ that we now go to the Father. And it's now through Jesus Christ that all treasures in heaven and earth are hidden. God's way now for all of these hidden treasures to be known by all of us is through Christ alone. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through Him. And to you that are listening today, if you want to know, if you want to make sense, out of this darkness, out of this pandemic and difficulty and challenge that we are all in, God is calling you to Him that you may know His treasure behind all this. But the way God the Father is accomplishing it right now is through His Son, Jesus Christ. It is through Him that we discover this hidden treasures in darkness. You know, there are so many things that we are going through right now, but all that we need to do is to go to the Father through Jesus Christ. And that's what we ought to know, that Jesus is the way to the Father and the way God the Father has made so that we will discover this hidden treasures in darkness. God bless all of you. The way of God the Father for us to know Him and to know these hidden treasures is for us to come through Jesus Christ. And that is always His constant invitation. And Jesus is also calling us to come to Him. 
because he alone is God the Father's secret. He is unto whom all of these divine treasures are revealed. So let us come to him today. Let us come to him through this song that inspires us and teaches us to just come to him. So it is our hope that you have discovered God's treasures in this darkness as you turn to Jesus Christ. God bless you. Keep supporting the ministry of Faith Fellowship Aurora. If you have any prayer requests, if you need someone to talk to, just take note of the numbers that will be flashing on the screen right after this message. Well, God bless you. See you again next Sunday.